Welcome back to my office, and today we're going to talk about design thinking. Now, design thinking might sound like a buzzword, but it's actually real, and it was created by IDEO uh, several years ago. It's an approach to building products that is different than what some companies have done in the past. It's not a prescribed one-size-fits-all type approach. It's much more a mindset to building products, and it's a very good mindset. It works really well. What I'm gonna talk about today is what design thinking means at Detroit Labs. That's my experience, that's where I practice it. I wanna share that with you. It works for us. We develop with the user in mind. What is the user going to see the minute they open the app? How are they going to interact with that brand right away? What are they going to think? Where's their hand going to go? How are they going to use what we build? These are key components in design thinking because it puts the experience at the forefront. It challenges the technical team to then build something for the user. An old traditional way of doing software development is taking a lot of time to figure out all the different technical requirements, figuring out what is available on the technical side, and then building around that. The unfortunate thing is you have something that is designed around technical limitations or technical compromise. You have something that you're handing to users that is not what they want or what they need. It's what you have available. And now I'm, I'm speaking from a software standpoint, but really this could be applied to absolutely anything that you build. A really great example is Beats, the headphones, not the vegetable. They created a product that was beautiful. It was not the most technically superior product out there. It did not sound better than your Sennheisers, but it was designed better. That means when consumers walked into a store, they saw Beats first. They wanted to be bought into that brand. When Dr. Dre partnered with Monster, I don't know if anyone remembers, but those were the original partnerships, they did an amazing job of designing these products to turn into status symbols. And a very important note, the most significant motivation that takes place in a human's life is status. Gamification, when you're thinking about that, it's all about status. We can touch back on that later. Monster and Dr. Dre created this design. The minute you walked into a Best Buy, you noticed them. Headphones until that point were very utility. They were very focused on quality and sound. I mean, why wouldn't they be? It makes complete sense. But Beats turned things upside down. They said, all right, we need to design something that is attractive, that people are going to desire. They thought about the user first. They did design thinking. Now, because of doing design thinking, they actually didn't have to make a technically superior product to then go and sell to Apple for billions of dollars, which is a very fascinating thing, actually. Now, I'm not saying go out and build a technically inferior product, but I am saying that design matters and design matters sometimes more than anything else. You need to entice users and sell to users first and foremost. You could have the best product in the world, but if no one's using it, it doesn't matter. So when you're thinking about your next great idea or your next product, think design first, think users first. Once you start there, everything else falls into place and you're gonna build better products. If you have any strong opinions on design thinking, if you've used it in the past, leave some comments below. And with that, I say thanks for tuning in this week. I look forward to talking to you next week. And take a minute to subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and we'll see you later.